Hello, can you hear us? This is Split Screen Gaming Podcast, the occasionally weekly podcast where we sit for in each other's homes and we talk about video games. <laughs> and we're some friends. That went downhill. So <laughs> I was like, how old is this Adele song? Is it too old? Yeah, it's too old. No, I knew what you were talking about. Mm, episode 38, you guys. Thanks for sticking with us, with us for 38 episodes. And by that, I mean a lot of y'all are new, so you haven't been here for 38 episodes. But we have a yeah. whole library you can go back and listen to because it's irrelevant It seems like people now. go back and... And listen to older stuff. It does, yeah. According to the plays, you guys like the old yeah. stuff. You do, yeah. Including you Old love... Spice. We're sponsored Apparently by Old you... Spice this week. You guys like hearing us talk about Breath of the Wild, because those ones... <laughs> <laughs> it's a deep cut. That's what Breath of the Wild sounds like. That was episode... Yep. What was that? Episode, like, four with Travis that we did that? I think it was episode three. I mean, we talked about Breath of the Wild like every episode for, like, three months, I feel like. I know. I know. Much to the disappointment of Chad. Who's, so, that's his favorite game of the year. It is. It, it, well, we'll talk about game of the year next week or the year. I don't know. Some goddamn time in December. Um, in we'll December, we'll, we'll share our favorite games of the year. Yeah. yeah. Spoilers. So, that won't be on my list. <laughs> oh, what man. What was the episode called? Chad thinks Breath of the Wild is boring. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's the whole name of the episode. It's, it was, it's very boring. And by the end of the episode, you were like, you know what? I can't disagree with you on any of that. And in this episode, people listen to a minute and a half of this one. Oh, Chad didn't like Breath of the Wild? Never mind. <laughs> yep. Unsubscribing. Hey, That's so we've got happens. some good stuff. This is actually a big episode for us. We've got it our is. first, like, legit wrap-up. We've tried this twice with, like, the, the monthly game thing. Yeah. And we've This is the it first time it's, it's, it's this worked is the first time, successful though. time where we're like, hey, <laughs> this is a game we're going to play. We did it in a month, and we both played it and beat it. We're also so we got, announced next month's as well. That's right, that's right, that's right. So that's coming up this episode. Uh, we've got our first installment of Xbox Checkbox to talk about in our kind of upcoming what we played this week. We've got, what else are we talking about? I'm not even looking at the goddamn thing. Um, We got uh, so reviews. We have, yeah, nice. we have some reviews. Not a lot of reviews, but mostly going to be focused on Super Metroid. Yeah, we're pretty much done on the game front for the rest of the year. Yeah. Almost. We've got like much. Xenoblade Chronicles coming out, but I don't know if I'm going to get that or not. I keep debating with myself. Master debating. Get it? Because we're all fourth graders. Hey, let's start out <laughs> with the way we start out most times. Guess what I've been playing, you guys? I got a we new got little baby. I have an Xbox One S. Got delivered on Woden's Tog. Did you know that Wednesday was actually named for the god Woden? I did not know that. I also think story. you might be giving us some bullshit. Nope. And Thursday is Thor's Day. True story. <laughs> Um, so I got an Xbox and I've been trying out, uh, we, uh, last week we put out the, Hey, tweet us, email us, or every single suggestion actually came in person from people, um, for <laughs> what I should have as a checkbox on my list of Xbox games. And we call this the Xbox I'm checkbox. I'm very curious. I gave one suggestion last week, I think. Did you? I think so. Yeah. Did I? It's probably oh. on there though. What? What? I guarantee you someone else recommended this game. Hold on, I, let me I look at my Xbox checkbox list. I have three games. Oh, yes, Holden Pardo, Sunset Overdrive. Yeah, yep, that's right. So that's we've got right. three games on that list here. Uh, we'll talk about one of them in a second, which is right now, this second. <laughs> <laughs> Xbox checkbox, checkbox number one. You guys, I have... <laughs> shut up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punch your teeth. I've been playing Cuphead. Oh. I got Cuphead. I've played it about play six hours... And I'm about two thirds of the way through, and this game is fucking amazing. Is it that I've this, heard it's really good. This is like might be. It's not. It's kind of a platformer. Not really. There are some like run and gun platforming levels in it. It but reminds also the me boss of like a, a bit platforming, like a, like a Mega Man game almost, where it's kind of like you're platforming kind of, but you're really attacking enemies and dodging their attacks. Like, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of not really. Okay. There are two different types I'll of levels in this game. There are, yeah, two different types <laughs> of levels. Uh, first of all, thanks to Die, who recommended I play Cuphead. 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 Um, there are two types of levels. One of them is what Cuphead was originally going to be when they announced it, and that is just boss battles. Usually single screen. There's one boss, has several different forms, and you're just fighting it until it's dead. They look hard, too. And yes, some of them are incredibly difficult. There's one of them uh, in the second world. There are four worlds. There's one of them in the second world that's a bunch of dragons that I finally had to be like, after I've probably spent maybe 
an hour and 20 minutes of my six hours on just this one boss. Jeez. Which is boss number 10. I have similar experiences I'll share yeah. in, in that regard. So I, I find that that a, the, every single boss has a simple or a regular mode you can fight him on. And of course, I've been doing regular because I'm not a pussy. And then I pussied out for the dragon and finally went simple just so I could move on to the next world and come back later. <laughs> uh, yeah, so in the the crux of this game, two le- two types of levels. There's the boss battles, and then they got a little bit of criticism. They're like, I don't, don't want to just play boss battles. So they also have two platforming-type levels where you run okay. through. There are a lot of obstacles and enemies and things like that. And those are also incredibly difficult. And... Those are probably my my least favorite part of the game. I mean, they're still good and they're a challenge, and least favorite part of the game is still a really high compliment for this game. But it's just fantastic, mostly because it nails the aesthetic and it nails the the character that it's trying to go for. Yeah, I was worried when I first saw this game that it was going to be just an art style because it looks so... It looks like a 1930s cartoon for people who haven't seen the game before. Yeah, It looks really, really cool. It's kind of like how South Park looked like like an episode of the show yeah this looks like you're watching a 1930s cartoon but it's a video game instead yep like it, like the graphics couldn't get better because it's just it is the art style although apparently it is xbox one x enhanced probably just 4K for 4k HDR, yeah. hdr textures but but it's the I'm gameplay is good though. That's, the that's shit good out of it yeah pretty much any any moment that i have i'm like hmm let me try this boss in Cuphead again, or let me try the next. And I usually each. What's great about it is that it, each level or boss takes between one and a half and three minutes to beat. But you spent so an hour on one. Holy crap! Well, so it's that it's that you have three hits. You can get hit three times standard, unless you have some kind of some special thing equipped. You okay. can get hit three times per, and then you're dead. God, they stole that from Mario. I know, right? Plagiarism, Jesus. So three times and you're dead. So it's it's like, all right, I'm fighting the first form of the boss, and then oh damn it, I got hit by something I totally could have avoided. Let me stop and restart. And then you immediate. There's no load time. You immediately restart. And I'm like, okay. And then I get all the way to the end, and then fucking die. I'm like, immediately restart because I know exactly. And that's what I love about this game is that everything is so fair. Every mm-hmm. death, you're like, damn it, that's why I died. This is how I could do it better. I'm gonna jump right back in and correct that mistake. So it's yeah, it's it's all trial and error and fucking learning these bosses, and then you finally trial and error enough to get past phase one, and then phase two pops up, and you're like, oh, that's how that part works. Let me die a lot and try to figure that one out, and then by the end, you're like, cool, I figured out all three phases or four phases of this boss, now I can beat him. That game will never come to PlayStation, but I really wanted no. to because I'm not gonna buy an Xbox just for that game, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of tempted because I really want to play that game. I'm it's glad fantastic. to hear it's good. Fan, glad to hear. Fantastic. So yeah, I have one more, two more worlds left. Well, I, I've started on world three, but it's great. There's also a multiplayer component. You can play as Cuphead and Mugman. And uh, I haven't played multiplayer with anyone yet, but Die told me that when you play multiplayer, it's a lot harder. I'm like, hmm. So it scales like a Dark Souls game does. That's good. Yeah. Like if you play multiple people Dark Souls, it like it makes the bosses harder. That kind of stuff. Yeah. That's cool. So that game's fucking great. Hopefully I'll beat it here soon and move on to the next checkbox. So I played that. Uh, we played Hidden Agenda on Thanksgiving. Explain the... Hidden Agenda to me, actually, because I don't even really know what the game is anymore. I, I It got kind of blurred together with a few other games. Yeah, so Hidden Agenda is the game from the makers of Until Dawn, Supermassive Games. That's right. It is okay. a PlayLink game, which means everybody plays with their cell phone. Yeah. There's an app you download, iOS or Android, and you that have links to have up. a phone? That's just another thing I have to buy I now. I know, right? Fucking great. <laughs> so you, you have it on your smart device and you're playing this is this one is a kind of like a crime drama suspense type thing. You're trying to prove a serial killer or, or like convict a, a guy who's a serial killer and he's like, Wait, I didn't do it and then you're like getting all these clues. Um this one in particular, like the whole thing and the name Hidden Agenda comes from the fact that one person on their phone sees a little card that pops up with a Hidden Agenda. Oh, I get it. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the Hidden Agenda says, hey, while you're influ- influence these choices a certain way, whether it's to let the guy overpower somebody and get out of his handcuffs 
or whether it's to make sure that somebody doesn't leave the prison, things like, so like there's one person who has an agenda or something that the others don't know about that they're trying to influence these decisions one way or another. And you're making these decisions on the screen as a group. You like choose left or right to to choose your in each situation, which pops up about every what kind 20 of to 30 what seconds. kind of like so like what kind of agenda do you have though? Like are you just like sabotage the investigation? It could like... be sabotage, yeah, or just or influencing it to go in one way or another. Like okay. there's a part where I don't want to give out too many spoilers, but I mean it's it's a there's a part where like there's a person that you could have come out and help you find a murderer, but he's also on death row himself, so it's a little bit of a risk. Or you could try to like take it on your own and you won't have his help, but also he could like fucking just go rogue and kill you while he's out of prison. Cool. Um, there are also two ways to play, and I didn't get to do any of the hidden agenda shit because of the way we played. It doesn't explain this very well, but when you start, there's like, oh, you can play cooperative or you can play competitive. And we're like, oh, well, there's three of us here. Let's play some cooperative stuff. And then, like, two chapters so that, there's in. There's no like, hidden agendas. Oh, right. Like, two hours late in, we're like, kind of ridiculous. Oh, Why would you? Have you guys had, have you guys, I mean, you're not supposed to tell me if you have, but have you guys had something pop up on your phone yet that says, like, hidden agenda? And like, no. I was like, oh. oh or well. someone's a really good liar. <laughs> <laughs> or that, yeah. That's kind of ridiculous. It's like, this is uh, two ways to play Mario Odyssey. One is with an Odyssey, and the other one's without an Odyssey. <laughs> Like, <laughs> no, the name I mean, of the game, like it should be, it should be there. Yeah, it was still pretty cool to play through it. It's like playing a Telltale game where one person has control of the the controller, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, you should make that choice," or "Oh, you should say this." Except for everybody has control, so it's kind of like we're all watching an interactive game, and we all have influence over the choices. So it was still a cool experience. Uh, my That's biggest cool. criticism of it is that it's it's a long game. Like I looked up, shout out to howlongtobeat.com. Mm -hmm. I looked up how long it is, and it's about eight hours. That's about as long as Until Dawn. Oh, yeah. We were playing that together with some friends. That's Exactly. We, have, yeah, that's... we had three people over, and we're all playing it, but then we get two and a half hours in, and we're like, cool, we're ready to take a break, and then you have to get those same three people back into the room again on a different day and a different time to continue the story. Because if you get a new person, then they're not going to understand what's going on. Yeah, that's tough. So that's and probably it's not the my kind of game you can play online either, because it wouldn't. I feel like it wouldn't work right. if you're playing with someone just – you know, on, on the West Coast or something like that. Right. Yeah. But it's a cool use of the new PlayLink technology, which has been used in a few games now, including That's You, which we talked about a couple months ago. So overall, it was pretty good. I probably would wait for it to go on sale if you're interested in getting it. It's only 20 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. It's not, not too bad in price. And then two more things that I've been playing, and this kind of leads Whoa, into... Lots of I games. know. I know, right? This kind of leads into a little quick discussion I wanted to have. Why I'm playing my games like I share too, Chad. No, shut up. Get out of here. I'm playing <laughs> Banjo Tooie. Oh, really? And yeah. Mega Man Legacy Collection on Xbox. And I'm playing these on Xbox through the Xbox Game Pass, which, you know, hearing about it, hey, it's a subscription service. You get access to over 100 games. You can download them to your system. Like, hearing about it, it's like, cool. That's pretty cool. I like that that exists. It's probably not something I would it. ever do. But, you know, I got one month for a dollar when I got my That's new Xbox. Good. Yeah, and I'm like, well, shit. I've now downloaded all the Gears of War games. I've now downloaded <laughs> uh, Halo 5. I've downloaded Sunset Overdrive. I've downloaded all these legacy things. So they're there and available for me to play. But the coolest thing that they're not telling people, unless you're, like, deep into that Game Pass, there are little challenges every month. And you get rewarded. So this month... Oh, that's cool. In November, there's a retro uh, retro and classic. They call it a... I think it's just a challenge. Yeah, the November challenge is if you play three hours of games like in this curated selection called Retro and Classic, then you get a mystery reward, <clears throat> which usually in is about $5 in value, whether it's Xbox Live Gold membership or Xbox Credit or DLC or a movie. So that's cool. I like that a it's lot. It's like that's a little meta awesome. game for Xbox Game Pass, which is awesome. Well, they're achievements basically, but an yeah, actual kinda. achievement, not like a gamer score. Yeah. So you get three. So yeah, three hours is that first mystery gift. Five hours is the ultimate mystery gift, which is a ten dollar value, and then ten hours is ultimate mystery gift and like the chance to win a TV or something like that. And I just thought that was really fucking cool. It it that's led me to cool. play games I wouldn't have played otherwise. And what kind of games? Like so, this is the retro. You said retro. 
Yeah, is so the theme. so there's like Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie. There's all like the Sega Classic Collection. There's the Mega Man Legacy stuff. Guacamelee Super Turbo Championship the, Edition. Just quick question: The Banjo Kazooie Banjo Tooie is that the, the Xbox 360 version of it, or like the N64? Right. No, it's the Xbox 360. Okay. The those games actually came out on 360, but now they're part of the Rare, Rare Replay Collection. Gotcha. And okay. they have yeah. So, like, Banjo 2, I've always been curious about, but I never actually played. Mm-hmm. And turns out I don't like it. Played about 90 minutes of it. <laughs> <laughs> Has none of the charm of the original. It's way too convoluted and stupid. And you had to wait like 20 minutes of intro video. It's stupid. So, I didn't like that. But I'm playing Mega Man Legacy Collection. I'm playing Mega Man 2. And I actually have it on my TV right now, on the, which is why I motioned with my arm and nobody, but you saw it. Um, I and that game's it. fun. It's first I'm playing sh- that I really one. I saw your shoulder move up. I couldn't see your hand. Right. I saw You're your right. shoulders. So I knew it was happening. Your shoulder. And then I just downloaded. We saw Guacamelee Two is coming out next mm-hmm. year, so I downloaded Guacamelee Super Championship Edition. Edition, even it's though I beat it game. on PS3. So yeah, Xbox Game Pass is a super cool little thing. I I enjoyed it. For I what did it was. the achievement thing. That is awesome. I That's know. the kind of stuff I want from Nintendo's. Like yeah. monthly subscription or whatever they're gonna do. I guess it's yearly. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff I want from them. Is I also like, learned play the game and get rewarded for it. Yeah, I also that's learned awesome. that there's a, an Xbox Gold member, kind of very similar. They call it Quests. And in November, if you complete three things, one of them is log into whatever the fuck they call their chat service three times or five times in the month, and earn 400 gamer score and download two of the Xbox Live Gold games. If you do all three of those things, then you get a $10 equivalent ultimate mystery reward as well. Like, that kind of shit is so cool. It's a meta game on top for playing video games, and it rewards you for being a, a member. This is the kind of stuff that happens when you're not in first in the console <laughs> sales, is you do cool things for your customers to yeah. entice. But they're not talking about any of that stuff. Honestly, if I, I know, that I've, stuff, I'd, I'd never be much heard more either inclined of those. To, Yeah, I'd be much more inclined to get an Xbox. That's, it's cool and upsetting that it's not being talked about. Yeah, like, I mean, it's cool that it's a surprise, but it's it's upsetting. It's like you could sell some Xboxes by showing customers you appreciate them in that way. Yep. As opposed to saying we got a great game lineup, you guys. We got a great game lineup. So that's the that's the thing too is that I'm looking at this Xbox Game Pass and my checkbox Xbox checkbox. So many X's. Um, and I've got like a good solid six or seven games that I want to play on there. I'm gonna try out Rise Son of Rome as well because it's integrated with my Hue lights. So that's, that might that's be, be I play the game. That might be the only reason to play it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm just going to try it. But yeah, that's what I've been playing this week. Before we transition to what you've been playing, I'm going to hit stop on my recording now because I have to poop my pants real quick. <laughs> BRB. Absolutely. Well, I'll talk about the games I've been playing. Um, I was able to 100% complete Super Mario Odyssey, which is awesome. I have all 999 moons now. I have all the music tracks. I've had all the, the captures, which the captures were surprisingly difficult to find all of them. Uh, there are two, like, there are Prada plants, which Prada plants have been in Mario games before in the past. If you throw your cap at the Prada plant, it just eats your cap. So I always assumed, well, I can't capture those because they'll just eat my cap if I, uh, if I throw Cappy at them. But you have to throw a rock at them, and then when you throw a rock at them, they're I've already eaten something, their mouth is full, then you can throw Cappy at them. And it took me way too long to realize that. I could, for the life of me, not figure out where the last two captures were. Those are the only two captures I had left were the fire piranha plant and the, like I guess, the poison acid piranha plant. So, super happy about that. The reward's okay. Basically, if you... If you get 999 moons, there's like a small little thing that happens in a kingdom without getting into too many spoilers on that one. Um, so that was cool that I finally got to uh, get to play that all the way through and to kind of see like the full breadth of what that game has to offer. A lot of people said that game was too easy, and I kind of strongly disagree with that. It's as easy as you want it to be. So you can skip some of the really hard stuff, but if you want to get all the moons, there are some extremely difficult platforming mechanics in there. Chad's back. Oh I'm my back. God. Chad's back. Hey, did you continue he... recording? Yeah, I was still talking. I was talking about Mario Odyssey and how I've 100% completed it. I got nice. all the moons, all that stuff. Good, good, good. And there's some, I was just, I was literally just talking about how it is, people talk about how it's too easy, and I disagree. It's as hard as you make the game out to be. Yeah. Like there are some there are some brutally difficult platforming parts, 
where there's one part where you have to actually there's a video on IGN of this of people in the office attempting to do this one part and so many of them have a really hard time with it you know like the long jump where you kind of like just oh, jump yeah. before you have to do eight of them in a row perfectly while the bullet bill is chasing you and you don't have cappy so like you have to like nail those there's no other way of doing it. it is so hard you have to like long jump take a few steps you're in the right um place in the small little square platform you're and talking about the one the where there's like a bunch of destructive blocks and yes. then there's like the small bullet bills that go and you're on your way you'll unlock the key and then you have to come back without cappy yeah that one i gave up on yeah it was yep. really hard but i did it nice I, it took it took a while but i did it uh and then some of the the hidden arts were really hard to find so I just looked those ones up. Some of those, I, was like, <laughs> I have no idea what they're talking about. And I looked it up. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm such an idiot. I knew this. I just didn't think hard enough about it. So Mario Odyssey is done. I've 100% beaten that game. It's a masterpiece. It's incredible. I started playing another masterpiece of a game, though. Yeah? Which one? Go. I got Elder Scrolls <clears throat> Skyrim on the Switch. On Switch? And Go on. It's, it's really good. It's awesome. Have you ever played Skyrim before? No, I've never played Skyrim. Me before. neither. This is my first first time. Um, it's it took a little while for me to get into it. Like Fallout Four, I got into it immediately. The world just sucked me in. This world is not as consuming, I feel, as like Fallout Four. But I think it's just because of my preference, not because there's any like less effort went into the you know the the lore and all that in the, in the background. But it really is one of those games where it's like, I can do anything I want to. Oh, I don't like this part. I'm just going to leave it and go do something else. You can just move around endlessly. It is... Uh, the amount of content is insane. Like, I yeah. feel like I've barely done anything. And I've been playing it for like maybe maybe 10 hours already. It's so, so good. I want to kind of keep updating on that one as I, as I play it. But That's right one now, of those games that you can beat in, like, the main storyline in, like, three or four hours. Yeah, the main storyline's really short, apparently. But then you spend, like, 400 hours doing everything else in the world because it's a huge yeah. living, breathing world. There is this point when I I realized, oh, my gosh, I really do care about this game a lot. You you do a certain side mission, and you, like, win the favor of a Jarl. Jarl is – or Jarl, I can't remember what they're called. But they're, like, the kings of, like, a certain town. And he says you, you can have this partner who will follow you around and kind of help you in combat. And he gave me someone named Lydia. And I'm like, cool, this will make combat easier. It'll be nice to have that. And I'm like, I don't really give a shit about her, though. Like, it doesn't matter to me. And then I was using a fire attack, and I accidentally burned her as well. And she ended up dying. And I remember looking at her and being like, oh, no, like, Lydia. It was like kind of like the moment in... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man, that's really funny. So, <laughs> I like lost my train of thought completely. How now many cups because, do I have on this table? No, I don't one know, knows. how many cups do you have? The point is, is like, oh yeah. So, um, when uh, in Uncharted Four, when Elena dies, I'm like, I don't really care about these characters. And I'm like, oh my spoiler god, Elena alert. died. Come on, so she doesn't really die, but also spoiler more... <laughs> alert. <laughs> it's been a while. If you haven't played that game, so. I actually killed Lydia, and I'm like, oh, no, Lydia. And I'm like, wait a second. I'm buying into this world. <laughs> like, I totally have fallen into this world. Like, if I was able to have a reaction to that moment and get upset about it, I'm in this world. And then I just kind of spitballed and just kept playing from there. And it's one of those games you lose hours into. And the fact yeah. that it's on Switch makes it even worse. I went to family for Thanksgiving, and I brought my Switch so I can continue playing Skyrim. And I started playing, and all of a sudden it said... You have, you know, low power. And I'm like, oh, my God, I've been playing this game for, like, three hours and didn't even, like, realize it. Holy shit. It's totally consuming. I really, really recommend it. Yeah. We will talk about another version of that in the review roundup. Ooh, your review. But uh, it's available on every console, but I think the Switch might be... Like, if you don't care about the graphics... Yeah. It's... That might be the better, the best way to experience it, just because you can kind of take it with you everywhere you go, get a little bit of time um, in on it. That's one of those um, games that I feel like everyone should play, but I think I'll never, ever get around to it because it's I so agree, daunting. Yeah. yeah, it's daunting, but, like, you make the game story, and I know that sounds so cliche and stupid, but you make the game story meaning that, like, okay, like, my journey is X, Y, and Z. I'm only going to do X, Y, and Z, and then I'm done with that game. Yeah, but like, I'm the so kind much of person there, that, so like, 
I have to collect everything. Oh, there's a side mission. Let me go to the side mission before I get to the main mission, and then suddenly I'm just like swimming. You should inside never missions. play a Bethesda game then. I, I, like Fallout Four, I have a gigantic list of. Side oh yeah, I don't play do. Fallout for that. Li- I I played. Did I say four lots? No, you said Fallout. Okay. Uh, it sounded like it to me at least. Or maybe I just three, I heard that and I, I got like meant. three hours into it. and I was like, no, nope, can't do this. But I loved Wolfenstein yeah. One. Can't wait to play Wolfenstein Two. Also got that on Black Friday. It's technically not a Bethesda game. It's not made by Bethesda. You're not made by Bethesda. It's no, made by I'm machine not. games. Uh, I think you should. I don't know Fallout Four is I think one of my favorite games. I love that, but I've never beaten it because one of the, th- the things I like about it is that every time I go to play it. I know there's a ton of stuff I can still do. Yeah. So I almost don't want to do everything in the game because then I won't be able to go back to it anymore. And it's a world I can kind of continually... You also can't do everything in the game. It's impossible. Uh, No, I think you can. People have done it. No, they haven't. All right, fine. They haven't. Yep, I'm sure there's something somewhere that somebody hasn't done. Well, there's something that we have both done. What? And that is this week... Each other's moms. No, this oh. month, I should say, we both played Each other's Super dads. Oh, yeah, Super Metroid. Yeah, so let's talk about Super Metroid. We both yes, let's! Game. Oh, my God. So this is this was your first time playing it and mine, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this I, was... I started playing it before, but never finished it. Now I've finished Super Metroid. Super Metroid, top level. I I loved this game. A oh, yeah, lot. I would say... I liked it a lot, too. There were some frustration points, but nothing oh, yeah. that completely deterred from me living the game if anything it kind of made me more engrossed in it when i was frustrated yeah because i didn't like i didn't get frustrated and be like i'm done with this game i'm stopping i'm like i i, I can't get past this point why can't i get past this point i want to get past this point and i just like <laughs> kept pushing and pushing let's talk about the good first what did you love about this game i think one of the things that struck me about the game was when, when playing because i played metroid prime first yeah that was my first metroid game i really played and playing this i'm like oh my gosh i now have a better appreciation for how good metroid prime is because it is so, it has the same atmosphere. Yeah, this game it's, is. It has is a two D version of, of Prime. Yeah, it's a two D version of Prime in that sense, where like you're just in this world. The music completely envelops you and gets you into it. Even yeah. though it's, it's more of an ambient soundtrack. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's made with the the chipset on a Super Nintendo Classic or on a, a Super yeah. Nintendo, um, but it somehow is just like. Yeah, it's this atmospheric ambiance rather than music. There's no like song that you could hum or something like that. But it's it's There's perfect. One. It's perfect. Yeah, the soundtrack and the sound design in general is is perfect. It's also too, I love it's one of the things I love about games is when you don't aren't really told the story necessarily like there's yeah. a little like opening bit where they tell you like, hey, you're going to this planet so you can find the last Metroid. Yeah. Even though at the end there's like a bunch of them. Uh, no, those were Mechroids, I believe they're called. Oh, Mechroids? They're artificial okay. ones. Gotcha. Uh, that's good to know, because I didn't know that, because I didn't read the user manual, I guess. It's in the user manual? Yes. We'll that's talk one about of the, that. That's one of the bad things that I don't want to talk about. Yeah. So, you are kind of experiencing the, 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 the world just by being in there. Yeah. There's like a cool moment where, uh, we're just doing spoilers in this. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a 30-year-old game. Once you beat Ridley and you walk years? in in the room, and there's like the the capsule that the Metroid was in, but it's broken. Yep. There's no like, oh no, the Metroid is gone, and now you must find it. Like the plant somewhere, it's yep. like you just walk in the room and it's a broken canister, and you're like, oh, you're like, oh shit, the Metroid's gone. Like yeah. you are having this realization as opposed to the game being like, by the way, there's no Navi being like, hey, listen to me, the Metroid's gone. Yeah, nothing like it that. It was just for the, the time, like incredible. Environmental, environmental storytelling. storytelling. Yeah. Oh, Jinx, you owe me a soda. <laughs> so the atmosphere, I think, is the biggest highlight of the game. Yeah. I really also loved the progression system. <coughs> I feel like every 30 to 45 minutes, I was getting some new cool move or some new cool weapon that made me feel, dang, I'm suddenly a lot stronger. Or, oh my god, that's exactly what I've been needing for the last... Like, everything is hard, and then suddenly you're like, oh my god, that's exactly how I kill these enemies now with a the fucking froze the freeze beam yes the ice beam yeah every single one that you get they're they're placed often enough well i guess it's weird because you can do you can do it all out of order but it's like yeah you can it's often you miss things completely like i did (laughs) or yeah you could i got all the way to talk about that ridley's lair without having the the um 
without having the spin Spacer. jump. Oh, that really? You, yeah, that like makes you fly and shit like that. And without really the plasma beam. Could... I feel like you uh, have to I got have real good at wall jumps. <laughs> 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 I had the anti gravity suit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, you can you can do so many like you can do so much of this out of order or beat the game without finding certain like essential things. Yeah, which is it, and weird, which can but... make it a lot harder too. Yeah, it can. It can unnecessarily hard when you're like, oh my god, why haven't I beat this thing or where do I go? And like, well, oh, I haven't found this yet. I was fighting Ridley and. We were gonna record this yesterday, and I'm like, Chad, I can't, I haven't, I can't beat Ridley. I just can't get get past Ridley. And then you're like, well, um, just use like the plasma beam or whatever. And I'm like, I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what that is. So I fought him like many, 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 many times in a row, like a frustrating amount of times. And Chad's like, yeah, second time I beat him. Yep. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? So then. Chad's like, go get the plasma beam, come back. You, you very thank, I'm very thankful to you because you told me how to get out of that place because I thought I, I was know. stuck there. Which is, we'll get to the obscurity part, which I yeah. like and dislike. <laughs> um, I get the plasma beam, come back, beat him on my first try. Once I had the plasma beam, yeah. there were like 20 attempts before that, but I wasn't as geared up as I should have been. So it's kind of cool that the game never says like, oh, you should have this right now. Right. Like it will let you re- just fail relentlessly. Until it's, you realize, you know what? There's probably something I'm missing. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely the hardest game I've ever played for that reason. I would say, hardest game you've ever played. Hardest game I've ever played for that oh. reason. Yeah, and not because like the bosses themselves are super difficult, but because you have to explore so much is on you to do well in the game. Like even Metro Prime didn't have that. Metro Prime's like, hey, you should go. Like yeah. mission log, go over there. Like there's some weird anomaly, and you go over, and then you do something. Yeah. You can turn that stuff off, but no one does. I don't. At least I don't know anyone who has turned that stuff off. I've never played a game that was this hands off before. Yeah, which is a good and a bad thing. It's good because it's like, oh man, you have all yeah. the agency here. You can do whatever you want. You can fuck totally. up. And we're not gonna hold your hand. But it's also incredibly frustrating when you miss one little thing in a room somewhere and you get all the way on the other side of the map and you're like, fuck, I gotta make my way all the way back there. Did you get the spring ball? Yeah. That was so obscure to find. I don't remember ridiculous. where that one was. Where was so that? So you, uh, I think it's in Meridia or something like that, like the, the water area. I hate the water but, area. I fucking hate yeah, it. Yeah, water areas in general aren't that great. But this, so in this one... There's you get the grapple beam right, and the grapple beam unless you swing back and forth. Sometimes the little grapple spots are rusted. Yeah, and they'll fall away. And they'll fall away. And there's just one little tiny square where there's a oh, grapple. Oh yes. And you have to like swing on it, have it fall through, and then somehow get in that tiny hole. And then in there, there's somewhere in that little maze. After that is is the spring ball. Yeah. That is so easy to miss. It's not an essential item for the game, but. Yeah. That is so unbelievably easy to miss. And you've got to have, like, the spin jump to get up in that little hole, too. Like, You could wall jump. Oh, yeah, to the spin jump to get up in, that, in there, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you can't jump normally. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the things that were frustrating or negative. I think... I had the, two points that I was really frustrated by. Yeah, I think the biggest thing yeah. for me was it's such a game out of a different era. Yeah. Because... So much of this, especially if you've never played a Metroid game before, so much of this is in the user manual, which is, yeah. like, you, when you think about it way back then, when you're a kid, you're like, oh, cool, I'm going to go get a game. You go to the store, you buy it on the car ride home. What do you do? You open it up, you read the user manual front to back. Mm-hmm. And so many games relied on it. I didn't realize how heavily until I went back and played it. But, like, Metal Gear Solid, you know, on the back of the Jewel CD case, you'll have the radio frequency to contact, uh, I forget who it was. But, like, so many little things and, like, hidden things that you would find in a game manual nowadays we expect in, from a tutorial or something in the game to tell us that. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, the the red doors right off the bat that you have to have the missiles for, <laughs> I spent maybe 20 or 30 minutes jumping around this map, and I'm stuck. I'm like, I can't go anywhere else. I've been everywhere I can go, and these I don't have the thing for these pink doors. I thought it was going to be missiles, but I shot one, and it didn't open. I shot two more, and it didn't open. I was like, well, fuck. I'm not going to waste my missiles. They're valuable. They're precious. And you only have five of them. I know, right? So, turns out, all you have to do is shoot five missiles at the door. Yeah, you shoot all of your missiles, of course. <laughs> there's nothing to indicate that at all, except if you read in the book, like, oh, this is a red door. It takes five missiles to unlock. 
why why five missiles though that's something i don't understand I know, right five missiles or one super missile when you came to the green door and i figured out that was the super missile i'm like please god just be one <laughs> like don't be all five of my super missiles so Luckily, here's why i one. think that might have been a case like a subtle little thing to teach you oh i can shoot five regular missiles to open this door or i could shoot one super missile and it's kind of a way to teach you this is how oh. strong a super missile is it's worth five regular missiles that's okay that's cool i think that's that i think is why that makes like sense. a little yeah. subtle learning thing that makes sense um there are impossibly hidden passages yeah all over this game like no indication at all that there should be anything there and you don't mm-hmm. get the x-ray goggles to like let you see things until way late in the game and then i, I forgot that i just went through other areas i've been to before and it's like yeah. all right cool what is around here in every single room. Yeah. Even after you get the maps for each area, you can still fill up and get make the whole map pink, and then there are still extra hidden rooms that aren't on the map, too. Yeah. And also, so, too, like, there's... You'll see... So, you'll see... There's no... On the map, there's no way to see where a door is. Yeah. So, you'll just see, like, there's a room, there's a white outline for it, and there's another room below it with another white outline. There could be a door at any point on the border of those two rooms. At yep. any point. It could be a secret area. It could not be a secret area. Ridiculous. Yep. Yep. But, but when you because find of it, that, it kind of makes really it rewarding. Yeah, it is. It kind of makes it. I guess back then, NES and Super NES, you could beat these games really quickly if you knew where everything was. You know, games didn't yeah. last that long. I mean, this one you could probably speed run it, and I mean, the average person could probably once you know where everything is in a few hours. Yeah, um, they there's an expectation you can beat the game under four hours because like yeah. at the end you get something different if you beat the game in four hours or less gotcha yeah so i think the idea is oh we have to make this game last a really long time because somebody bought this and they want to be able to play it over weeks and months so we're just going to make things really hard to find and you're gonna have to go bomb every little corner and shoot through everything and walk through everything that looks unwalkable yeah so but see it's funny though because in the original legend of zelda that was a thing it's like, yeah. yeah, you just have to know to bomb that one random wall. Nothing your bombs are hard to get. Like... There's nothing nothing visual. But Link to the Past made a point of walls that can be broken look cracked. Yep. That is not the case here. Yeah. That lesson was not learned. <laughs> but again, or was it's, it learned it's... for any Metroid game after that? Yeah. <laughs> as well. They're all like this. It's it's something of the time, I guess. You know, something to make you get your time out of this game that you paid however much money it cost back then. But there's, yeah, go, go, say something. I've been talking a lot. There we go. Uh, I had two points that were very frustrating. Yeah. And so there was the Ridley boss, which I already kind of explained. I just didn't have the right equipment, and it was beating my head against the wall trying to beat him. There was also one point, too, where I was running, and then I fell through a hole, and to get out of the hole, you have to know how to wall jump. I had been playing that. This is about half yeah. of my game. Oh, and I had wall no, jump, God. Yeah, and I had no idea how to wall jump. That is the hardest thing to figure out. Yeah, and they don't, they don't quote-unquote, teach you how to do it. You just end up in a room with a bunch of koalas who are doing it, and you're supposed to be like, oh, I wonder if I try to do what the koalas are doing, whether I could do the same jump they're doing. They also expect you to figure it out pretty fast. Cause what happens is the koalas yeah. do it, and then you're like, I'm just going to jump. Nope, can't do that. Not like high enough. And then I realized, okay, they're wall jump. Maybe I can wall jump as well. By the time I put that together, the koalas started to fall back down so they could repeat that loop again. I would get to the platform I needed to get to, just about get there, and a koala would land on me and push me back down. <laughs> I'm like, fuck those koalas. Like, I can't get out of here. Yeah. I was about to throw my 3DS. It was so frustrating. It was so frustrating. There's another point. This one was easier to figure out. I figured out this one uh, much easier, but... You fall through another hole again, and an animal, like, runs and then jumps really, really high. And when you're doing your, like, hold down B to run, once you get to a certain speed, you can just hold down the down button, and then you'll, like, you'll start to glow and, and yeah. like, and, and flash. And then you just, when you jump, you jump straight up really, really far. Right. Game never tells you how to do that. It just nope. says, this animal does it. Maybe you can do it, too. Yep figure it out it's all little subtle things to try to get you to figure it out yeah i had no 
no guilt going when I got stuck for more after that, you know, the super missile thing where I was stuck for yeah. 20 or 30 minutes over something so simple. I had no guilt going and taking a look at a guide if I got stuck for more than like 10 minutes. And that's where I, you differed. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I would just comb through everything and try to find a different path or like look at my map and be like, okay, like it looks like the boss. Because they at least show you the bosses. Yeah. They at least do that, which is nice. <laughs> Uh, I'd be like, okay, he's over here, so maybe, like, this is the direction I need to go in. And I'd try to, like, figure out something over there. And then by the time I got the x-ray visor, I was just, like, walking in a room, using the x-ray visor immediately to see what's in the room. Where can I go from here? It was still so hard to find yeah. certain things. Like, even, excuse me, even combing through the whole game, a guy, there were still times I needed to use a guide. I used a guide, like, a handful of times. Yeah. But I feel like I had to. And I'm thinking, geez, if I were, you know, like a 10-year-old kid, I got my Super NES in the 90s when there's no internet. Really, I mean, there was internet, but like not no, to the degree. No, you bought a yeah. game guide. You bought a, a game guide. strategy guide. If I didn't have that, how would I have beaten this game? Like, I don't think I could have. You would have gone through every level and bombed everything. Because that's like the only game that you really have. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was... It was really frustrating playing this game without a guy, but again, like the reward you get when you figure it out is immense. Yeah, it's like it's like two D Dark Souls with a gun. Kinda. Like there are some really obscure, like hidden places, like behind a single, like so, like there's this um, glass tube you walk in, and when you get power bombs, oh my god, if you, if you that blow fucking up, pissed me off so, so much. I suspected that you could do something there, so every time I got a new item. I would go in that room and like, all right, I got missiles. I'm going to like, I got super missiles. I'm going to shoot up in the glass, see what happens. Get the power bomb. And I'm like, all right, we're going to test it out and see if this works. And it broke the glass. And I'm like, sweet. Like that I figured that out. That was me off. awesome. I, Cause you go but through like, that room once before you get the power yeah. bombs. And yep. so I was like, oh, this is just, oh, that's a cool little atmospheric area on my way to the other part of that land. And then I was in, what was it called? The water place? Meridia. Meridia. I, I was in Meridia and I was like, going through there and i fell down into back to that area and i was like fuck i'm back here and i had no idea that you were supposed to because nowhere in the game have you ever busted glass with a bomb before <laughs> so I, I walked through, i was like fuck i'm all the way back here and now i i obviously went the wrong way somewhere in meridia so i spent 45 minutes going back through all the levels getting all the way back to meridia to find out no i didn't miss anything I was like, there must be something then on the way to that little glass tube that I missed. I fall back in there. And I was like, that's it. There's no fucking way that I'm going to go back and do 45 minutes of traveling back to get back to Meridia. And then I read online, oh, yeah. And then once you get to the glass tube, you do the little bomb. And I was like, you're kidding me. <laughs> you're fucking kidding me. I, all I had to do was lay a bomb. There's nothing, nothing telling you, oh, bombs break glass. Stupid. So stupid. But that was a very Dark Souls moment. I can't remember which is in Bloodborne there's a whole world that's hidden by like beating a certain boss and then walking to the end of this broken bridge and like talking to someone and then you go to this giant castle and there's a whole other level for you yeah. to go to like who on earth would have ever figured that out like that stuff like that clearly had an inspiration on like the souls series i think yeah and it's it's cool in the sense that Oh, I figured out this thing, and the whole world just opened up in in a new way. But again, like the obscurity to it means that everything before you get to that moment is really frustrating. Yeah, yeah. It was still it was still fun though. Oh yeah, I enjoyed the hell out of it. I loved all the boss battles. I felt smart whenever I finally was like, "Oh, that's <laughs> how you fucking beat this boss." And I figured it out. I was like, "Yeah." I like the one boss I liked a lot um, was the the red dragon thing. Where you just pushed him to the very end. Yeah. So he fell in the lava. That was awesome. Because I was trying to think, like, I kept, I'm like, I've shot so many missiles at this guy and I kept dodging his attacks. Yeah. So to dodge his attacks, he would move farther away from where he needed to go. So I wasn't, like, quite getting it at first. Yeah. And then eventually I'm like, oh, he keeps moving back, he keeps moving back, he keeps moving back. And then eventually I just kept doing that and, like, getting good at, like, like, hitting him before he could hit me. So I just kept pushing him back and then he died and I'm like, oh. I was be pushing it back this whole time. Like it wasn't like a traditional boss battle I had done in that game. Yeah. Yet. But Good what shit. do you think? Yeah. What do you think of the boss battles? 
I thought they were great. I love that each one was like its own unique. I mean, they, they had kind of a very similar, you got to shoot this boss till it dies, obviously, or except for that one where you didn't have to. But they were all very unique. I didn't even realize one of them was a boss until I got to the room with the four statues that led you down to yeah. uh, Mother Brain. And I, I forget which one it was. What were the four big bosses again? There was Ridley. There, there was, was Ridley, that guy. The red guy. The, um, the tall um, two-story boss. Yeah, and there was like the, the fish in the water. The fish in the water. See, I already forgot him. Oh, one what? Um, no, you must have fought him because I fought all of them. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, it's like you you go in the room and it's in Meridia. It's underwater, and like he picks you up. I'm just gonna Google it. You Super go, he, like, Metroid bosses. Yeah, he'll he'll pick you up and then it just repeated, repeatedly. Oh, it's the hits eyeball you. one. With the flames. Was that it? No, that's Fantoon. That's a mid boss. I could have sworn it was like the Meridia fish. Yeah, I can't remember his name. Really, to just Spore Spawn, Craig, Crocomire? It's was like Drogon or something like that. Crocomire, no fair. Nope, that's him. Oh, was it the. Dragon. Dragon, yes. Oh, that one was... I beat him super quick. Oh, I had a hard time with him. I accidentally beat him. Yeah, because he picked you up, brought you up, and then you had to, like, grapple beam the... Yep. The Yeah, I accidentally did that. I didn't mean to grapple beam the electric thingy, but then mm-hmm. I did it, and was like, oh, he's dead now. Cool. Yeah, I wasn't doing that at first. <laughs> I guess that's why I don't remember it much, because I didn't struggle on it too much. I just accidentally beat him the first time really easily. I struggled on all the bosses, except for Mother Brain. Mother Brain was the easiest boss in the game, I thought. Oh, really? I yeah. thought getting to Mother Brain was a pain in the ass. So what, I, here's, what, here's what I did, right? Yeah. Is I... So I'm assuming you're talking about, because a lot of the stuff up to Mother Brain's not that hard, except for the, the room that Mother Brain is in. Right. From like the all save these, station to... Yeah, so you have all these like orange orbs coming over and like hitting you Shooting while you're trying to use missiles to to um, destroy these like barriers to keep, right. keep moving forward. So I used missiles to destroy all the barriers, right? And then I went back to the room where you can refill all your missiles and your energy, and then went. Were right the barriers back. still gone? The barriers were still gone. Oh, see, I got to Mother Brain and I was like, "All right, I'm out of missiles. I guess I'm doing everything with my plasma beam." Yeah, so I used I, all my I, missiles destroying all the shit. And I learned something really frustrating, though, is that those missile recharges don't recharge your super missiles. They uh-huh. only recharge regular missiles. So the next time I went through that, I just used my regular missiles to destroy the barriers. Then I had all yeah. these super missiles, and I was fighting Mother Brain, and it wasn't that hard. And then you get that sweet beam. Yeah, that sweet beam with the Metroid. <sighs> the old Metroid like that? that you saved. And then he comes back. He, well, he almost kills you earlier in the game. And then he's like, wait. You're Samus. I recognize you. And then he comes back and he gives you his life force, and you get that sweet beam and shoot the shit no, out of Mother he Brain. He gives you your own life force back. Because remember when you're when you're on your way to Mother Brain, that Metroid comes over and like starts yeah, and absorbing sucks your life, which freaked me out. I'm like, I, I can't. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. And then he like lets you go. That was yep. a really cool moment. I like that moment a lot. Uh, what was he gonna say? Oh, you didn't save him. He just like kind of attached himself to you. And yeah, yeah. But oh yeah, so I was gonna say. So there are two like like uh, countdown sequences where you have to like get out part of things self destructs. Oh yeah. The first one, it was like the opening of Metroid Prime. It was awesome. Whereas like, the opening of the game, you you are on the space station and then you fight this you fight Ridley on there and you're getting out. The whole place is gonna explode. You get out no problem. The last one though is the only time I have ever died in a countdown. Really? Sequence like that? Yeah. I, I got through with, like, a, a bunch of time to spare, so I'm the best, when, basically. Here's my problem is that you so you never got, like, the jump for, for everything, right? The jump for everything? Like, the space jump where you, like, you spin around? Oh, yeah, I eventually did go back and get that. Okay. I, I had the hardest time with that mechanic. I could never sometimes yeah. figure out to go up higher sometimes. So I, I could falling. definitely go sideways forever, yeah. but I could not get up very easily. So I was trying to do that to get out of the Mother Brain self-destruct sequence, and I kept falling back down into the lava that was rising, and yeah. I'm trying to like get back up again. By the time I got into like the normal map again, I yeah. had eight seconds, and I'm like, nope, <laughs> there's no <laughs> I way. Think, 
I can't remember. I can't quite remember, but I think I I got so good at wall jumping because I accidentally I went through a lot of the game without the high jump as well. Like I beat mm -hmm. the 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 two story boss without the high jump and then just wall jumped instead. So I got so good at doing that that I think that's what I ended up doing instead of the spin jump all the way up. Okay. Yeah, that would have made it easier for sure. Yeah. Yeah. If you could master the wall jump, which I did not. I did. I got good at that shit. Yeah. Well, that's Super Metroid. Yeah. Liked it a lot. What is next month's game, Holden? Next month's game, I wanted to go with a game that is equally atmospheric. So we're going to be doing Bioshock. Ooh, Bioshock 1. Now, there are a zillion ways to play this game. So if you guys have a PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, PlayStation 4, PC, Xbox One, iPhone. iOS, if yeah. if you still have it downloaded because it's still not available in the App Store anymore, you just have oh, to have really? it. They took oh, really? Oh, yeah, it down? they pulled that like years ago. Why? Because 2K is like, hey, by the way, we realize a lot of our iPhone games are shitty, so we're going to pull them. That's okay. I, that's yeah. good. It, w it was an odd choice to put Bioshock on an iPhone. Yeah. I played it for like a good 10 minutes. I was like, this is not good. It was yeah. cool that you could play Bioshock, Bioshock on a phone, but it was not good. That'd be a good game to have the Switch. Yeah. I'm going to be playing it on... Uh, so I played Super Metroid on the SNES Classic. You played it on 3DS. Yep. <laughs> How was it, by the way? Whoa. That tastes like chicken... Uh, how was it, your experience on the the 3DS? It was great. I, my yeah. hands got cramped a few times because I was, like, gripping so hard when I was fighting certain bo yeah. um, bosses. But, no, it was it was a good experience. Basically, playing it on a, a Super Nintendo controller was, like, the high, oh, yeah. this is literally how they designed it, and it was fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll be playing on PS4 Pro. You'll be playing, playing on, on PlayStation 4. PS4. Cool. Yep. So, we'll discuss that probably, like, right up next to the new year almost. Yeah, it'll probably be the last episode of the month. So, We are now 51 minutes into our episode, and we have not talked about any news. This is a weird week for us. We're going to do this backwards. Yeah, we should do that, and then we have, we have a review roundup to do still. <gasps> oh, 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 shit. What? Uh, uh, hold on, my new TV is downstairs at FedEx. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll be right back. We'll All right, I'll start, doing, I'll start doing the review roundup, I guess. So we actually only had two games for review roundup. I will catch Chad up when he gets back. Let me put my note here. That was hysterical to see Chad get so excited about that. He's getting, I think, a 4K TV, so he's, he's pretty pumped about it. Finally can take advantage of that PS4 Pro. So we have two games for Review Roundup this week. Uh, we have Skyrim VR, and we have Planet of the Apes Lost, uh, Last Frontier. So Skyrim VR got a 77 on Metacritic, and it had a huge range of people either liking it or completely just not enjoying the experience so the number one reviewer the highest rated review is from a company called vr focus they gave it a hundred which seems really high considering some of the other things people were saying they said as it stands some may find the price point of the video game a bitter pill to swallow odd thing to say for giving a game a hundred but for those who dreamed of a truly immersive role-playing experience, the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim VR is simply the best opportunity available today. On the low end, we had Game Informer, who gave it a 50. He said, I would love to see more experiments like Skyrim VR and Resident Evil 7 in virtual reality, where fully featured games get ported to the still young medium. This port is rough, but I'm still hopeful that there is a game out there that works both ways. For now, if you want to revisit Skyrim, your best bet is to boot up one of the editions you already own or grab it on Switch. Uh, IGN also gave it a 68. And the consensus seems to kind of be that it is cool that you can play Skyrim in virtual reality. Seeing the world of Skyrim in virtual reality is a great experience but when you get to actually playing the game, that's where it seems to fall apart, which doesn't seem super great. Um, there are problems where, like, this is something I noticed on myself playing in Skyrim on the Switch, that when you walk downstairs, there was a head bob effect, where it kind of looks like your head kind of bobs up and down. You don't want that in virtual reality because it's really jarring and it has made a lot of these reviewers nauseous. That's something I keep hearing is, is that... You wouldn't want to play this game entirely in VR because it's nauseating. I think they actually the guys on Game Informer in their most recent podcast said that it is the most nauseating experience they've had in VR. I have had ex nauseating experiences in VR because I don't play it a lot. I'm assuming these guys have a pretty good, um, uh, we'll say, amount of time they've used with, with VR. So the fact that they're getting very nauseous from it 
isn't a, a great sign. And there's two ways you can play it. So you can you can either walk around free roam and go to different locations by walking, like just like you do in every other uh, version of Skyrim. Or you can do this thing that's pretty specific to VR where you kind of just teleport quickly to other locations. And they said that kind of breaks the game. And I can understand why. Let's say that you have a few enemies that are attacking you and you want to get out quickly. Well, in Skyrim VR, you'd have to like back up, but they could still like shoot a spell at you and still get you to walking away. But if I could teleport out of their distance, that's a huge advantage and kind of cheating. Like that should like that ability to teleport quickly should like be a spell in the game as opposed to just a, 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 a way to navigate. So that was, it seems kind of a letdown. I'm enjoying Skyrim on the Switch so much that I was kind of curious how it would be in VR. The consensus doesn't seem too good, but it sells a 77 on Metacritic, which which is pretty high considering. So it seems like it's worth trying, but considering it's a full price game and it's a separate purchase from the version you already have, it doesn't seem like it's a recommendation, but some people have enjoyed it a lot. The other game we have is Planet of the Apes Last Frontier. This game leaked early, but now it's officially out. It didn't do as well as Skyrim VR. It got a 66 on uh, Metacritic. The highest review was uh, PlayStation uh, Lifestyle, and they said they gave it an 85. They said Last Frontier features a story that manages to excite and get players invested. In despite it not going too deep into the lives of both apes and humans. It's also an important experiment in storytelling and one that largely winds up being successful. On the other end, we have every eye.it gave it a 50. <laughs> I love this statement from them. They just said, weak and badly designed. This game didn't seem to do too well. It is essentially kind of like a like a Walking Dead kind of style game where you are making decisions that move this narrative forward. They said it's it's that, but it's not very good at doing that. They said a lot of the decisions that you made don't mean anything. There's nothing. There's nothing like it, there's no impact your decisions really have. Which I was kind of looking forward to this game in in a sense. I'm a, I can't say I'm a big fan of the earlier Planet of the Apes movies. Because I don't have a lot, a lot of experience with them, but I've actually really enjoyed the most recent trilogy of films that have come out so far. They seem to get better and better as they go along, and the stories are really solid. So I'm like, oh, cool. A story where I can decide what's going on in this world and this universe like, I care about sounded ex exciting, but if they don't go too deep into the animals, uh, the apes and the humans as characters, it's kind of a letdown. And Chad is back again. Oh, You're just... my God. Are you excited, Chad? So sometimes you got to treat yourself. <laughs> so I had to sell some stock, and I got <laughs> a $1,500 LG OLED C6 curved OLED TV. You had a curved OLED TV? Well, it was the only one that had 3D on it, and I have a lot of 3D Blu-rays. Uh, and the 2017 gotcha. models don't have 3D on them either, so I had to get this particular one. And then sometimes you go broke and into bankruptcy, <laughs> and you got to treat yourself some more. And then you die. And that's how and life works. Die. Yeah. What did you talk like, about for six minutes? I did the review roundup. Oh, tell me the highlights. Uh, the highlights are uh, Skyrim VR. Yep. Some people really liked it. Said it's a cool way to experience the world. But then when you go to play the game, it kind of falls apart. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Just because it's. I think the guys that game saying the guys that game from their podcast says it's the most nauseating VR experience they've ever had. Yeah, I think, I think I read a, a quote somewhere, I don't remember who it was or what outlet it was, but it said, um, I literally threw up playing Skyrim VR and I can't wait to play more. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's So like, it seems like it wasn't optimized very well. I, was, I, was, I shared an example of when you're walking downstairs, Yeah, it was a head bobbing like effect yeah. it's, that's just in the game but when you're in vr it's extremely nauseating to like have your perspective shift up and down yeah as you're playing like i can and if you want to climb a mountain you have to go upstairs which a lot of this game is mountains <laughs> there, there are a lot of mountains in this game so not a, a great experience there yeah what's uh, next what else and then i did uh the, there's only two games the other one was planet of the apes last frontier Oh, yeah, I'm kind of interested in that. Didn't get great reviews. You got a no. 66 on, on Metacritic, and the complaint is that... Um, I'm, I, I just read a quote. I'm reading the quote again. This is really funny. Like Metacritic Thanks, everyone, for humoring thing. me. 
they have all the like the review blurbs. The review blurb from every IA.IT was weak and badly designed. <laughs> that's, that's all they said. Uh, so it's basically it's a decision based narrative game. Yeah. But apparently your decisions don't really matter and don't have a lot of impact, and they gotcha. also don't happen very often. So gotcha. You're, they just should have made a movie. Like they, some people yeah. said they should have just made an animated movie of this. Nice. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. I want to blow my nose again, so you start the news. Okay, so news. I <laughs> I thought I had more than this, but not much more. It turns out I only have one. I only have one news story this week. It was a slow news week because it's Thanksgiving, obviously, in America. And if you're not in America, we love you anyway, despite your choice to live in a place well, without freedom. I'll make up for it because I got lots of news. Okay, good. I'll just read my one, and then I'll let you talk some more. I um, like talking. So this one, kind of on the, the trend of companies being gross with their practices Is bungie yeah. bungie yep changes destiny 2 xp system after players discover it was rigged yeah like, that's really disappointing to yeah hear. yeah they straight up lied like it's 2017 the biggest name in the game is transparency even if you're gonna have microtransactions loot boxes things like that transparency is important but basically experience points which actually in the grand scheme of things in destiny don't really do a lot for you Obviously, they get you up to level 20, but that's not really where the game starts. That's, that's like the rest of the game takes place after you're level 20. But it also, you get experience points to get Bright Engrams, which you trade in for uh, basically it's a loot box with cosmetic items, ships, like little things to make your guns look cooler or shaders. But they were straight up, if you repeat certain types of events, shorter events, like public events, which usually last like three to four minutes, if you repeat those, it will tell you you're getting 5,000 per event but if you do them con like many within a small amount of time you actually are gaining much less than that so they're straight up lying to you but That's if you so do shady. i know but if you do longer things like strikes or pvp and you say on those you actually ink get more experience than it's telling you so they encourage you to do like longer play session type stuff rather than quick succession successive public events so after somebody like on reddit said hey by the way i did the math i have some statistics here and yeah they're straight up lying to us about the experience we're earning bungie came out and says you know what we've done some research and the way that you're earning experience is just not quite what we want it to be so we're going to change it and we're like you fucking got caught and now you're <laughs> you're coming clean to me you know what you're right it was a bad decision we're going to change it you shouldn't have, you should have been transparent and not that it's a, like it sucks that they lied and that's the thing that pisses me off not the fact mm -hmm. that these these systems work in the way they do. Because there have been plenty of times where I'm like, oh, I just want to, like, oh, I'm so close to getting a Bright Engram, or I just want to get some experience to power up my uh, Warlock a little bit, so I'll do a bunch of public events. And if I had known, oh, that's not going to get me as much experience points, I just would have done something else that would have gotten me more. So fucking sucks. But that's another big company, Activision, and yep. they're the developer Bungie. Well, <sighs> then they updated it again. So they changed the XP earn rates. Yeah. Um, so you earn more, but then they doubled the amount you have to get in order to level up. I think it's okay as long as they are honest about are it. honest about it. Yeah. Because it's not. Yeah. I mean, it's all cosmetic stuff, so it's not like it's a, it makes you go buy shit to like in-game purchases and things like that. Now that's that's not what this particular one's about. But it's just shitty that they lied. Yeah, well, it's not all bad in Bungie, because they do have a good story this week, too, which is that Destiny 2 has a free trial for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be... Uh, you can try out the campaign and the multiplayer, and uh, it's actually starting today, I think. Yeah. The 28th, yeah, it starts today. So, that's cool. I don't think that's in a res I don't think it's something they did in response to this no. news, because they would I mean, have had to play this the They did it ahead because of Curse of Osiris is coming out on December 5th. Yeah. And they want to sell. Yep, so that's a good side of their narrative recently, yeah. at yeah. least. But we got some other sad news. Uh-oh. Who this died? sad. Arakita, Evita. Actually, you guys remember Rent? something is dying. What's Demon dying? Demon Souls servers are preparing to die in February. Oh, yeah. So if you have Demon Souls on the PlayStation 3 or PlayStation Now, yep. this is your last chance to play that with like the multiplayer elements, which, I mean, it's not super robust, you can get little messages left behind a, from people. That's a big see how part of the game, though. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a pretty... 
Like if I got stuck at a boss in Dark Souls, I would call someone in to help me. And not having that option option at all in Demon Souls is yeah. that's tough. Yeah. And it was upsetting because I had, was planning on getting a, P, a PS3 at some point so I could go back and play games like that. I actually like that. don't know. I played Demon Souls back before I was like doing anything online, uh, gaming wise. So I never used the feature, but I don't. Something tells me I don't remember Demon Souls having the ability to call people in to help you. It did have a PvP mode, I know, there, where other people could invade oh, your game okay. and fight you, but I don't think they had the help thing until Dark Souls. Okay. But what was helpful better. was being able to see somebody's blood stain where they died, where they jumped off a cliff. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I probably shouldn't jump off that area of the cliff there. Yeah. Or That's seeing a, a little part Yeah, seeing a little blue message though. on the side of a cliff that looks like you would die, but it says take a step forward, and you're like, oh, there's something really great down there. Yeah. So, so you have upsetting. until February 28th. It's a le- yep. little less than three months. Yeah, there's, there's still time, but it's upsetting. Honestly, I was surprised they were still on. Those servers were still on. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I bet they're making room on their servers for new games that are coming out. Yeah, and, and of course, I'm sure very few people are still playing it, too. Yeah, exactly. When did that come out? 2009? That sounds about right, yeah. Maybe 2008 at the earliest. I, February I can't 5th, 2009, yeah. 2009, yeah. Um... I think this is a, such a weird story. This is a story that just came out today, actually. PUBG is getting a yeah. mobile version only um, in China. Wait. A mobile version of the game? A mobile version of the game. They said it is going to be the same gameplay structure, but it will be adapted for smaller screen and touch controls. Only coming to China, though. Hmm. That's so weird to me. That's really strange. That doesn't make much sense at all. But side note, asterisk. Yes, there was the ability to play co-op, same as Dark Souls. Oh, there was okay. And Demon Souls. Yep. Pokemon series has now shipped over three hundred million copies. Whoa! And Ukulele now has a release date for Switch, December fourteenth. Oh, I totally thought that already came and went on Switch. No, no, they um that and Rhyme did not launch the same day as the other systems did. Still not going to play it, for the, but for those who care, it's coming. Huh. And then I think I have two more stories. I have two more stories, yeah. So I have that Verizon, uh, Horizon, Verizon. Verizon, Verizon, Horizon, uh, Forza Horizon, sorry. Uh, Forza Horizon. <laughs> <laughs> I kept messing that up. Oh, my God. That's a different thing altogether. Verizon yeah. and then Horizon Zero Dawn and Forza Horizon are all very different things. Yeah. So Forza Horizon Dev is working on a secret new game, and it's an open-world action RPG. Okay. That's interesting. I bet you still. I bet it's Cars Four from Pixar. <laughs> <laughs> and it's open world. You still fight as cars because oh, that's what they know. Please tell me they're making a Cars Four. I don't know. I'm sure they are. Ugh. But I mean, Forza Horizon developers, all they know is cars, obviously. So. They got to fight with cars. That's true. That's true. I'm curious to see what's going to be. I think that before Horizon Zero Dawn, I would have been like, yeah, "That's a joke. You can't yeah. switch what types of games you know you guys make." But Horizon Zero Dawn proved that Guerrilla Games can step very much outside of their normal wheelhouse. Yeah. Maybe, Hori- maybe the uh, Forza Horizon developers can do the same thing. Yep. So that's cool. And I thought this was a good story to end on because. We have we hear all these things about how these game companies are evil and terrible, but here's a good story. About Tell me. One. So there's all this Hitman stuff happened recently, where like Square Enix sold off uh, IO Interactive, and they said the the only reason that they gave they let IO keep Hitman because they could have kept it for themselves. Yeah, they just straight up gave Hitman the IP to them. They didn't sell it to them for a cheap price. Yeah. They just gave it to them. They said it's only Hitman if it's made by IO. And that That's was cool. Sweet. They could have just said, yeah, we're going to make our own version of Hitman where Noctis is breaking into castles <laughs> and, and you know getting into disguises that look like a chocobo or whatever they're called and kill things. It's cool to see a developer be like, yeah, you know, we could have done that, but we love games. We love the people who make games. It kind of goes the whole, like, it's art. Yeah. And these guys understand Hitman. They can make Hitman. We'll keep doing what we're doing, and they can... That was just that was awesome. That was very very cool. Good on you, Square Enix. I have a lot of respect for Square Enix now. That was very cool of them. And that's the news that happened. That's the way the news goes. Lick, 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 lick my balls. Say that all the time. That's Rick and Morty for all you fans out there. I don't know Rick and Morty. I don't watch it. You're an idiot. 
You're a fucking <laughs> idiot. Um, we have so, a, I think, what's what's left? Subscriber interrogative? We have, we have one all? interrogative this week. Okay. So, like, a question that I got asked, and that is, say you like Until Dawn a lot. What other games should you get? Other games are similar to it. So, to be clear, you're not saying that you verb like Until Dawn. Like, I'm going to spend all night liking until the sun comes up. No, you like Until Dawn. So I'm just, the game. there was a joke in my head because of the way you said it sounded weird. And then <laughs> didn't land, obviously, because none I of the audience like is laughing. I just on Facebook I can continuously hear them. Until Dawn. I don't care what it is, <laughs> I like it. So if you like Until Dawn, what other games should you get? Yeah. Um, it depends on what you liked about Until Dawn. If you like mm-hmm. some of the like horror elements, I would definitely recommend trying out Resident Evil 7. They have, especially they have like the new... Uh, gold edition that just came out or is mm-hmm. coming out in December or something like that. I think what the person in this case is referring to is like the d- the decision elements. Yeah. Oh, so in obviously Telltale. Yeah, Telltale games. How many of the Telltale g- games have you played? Mm, I played the first episode of Walking Dead and said, I don't like this. Okay. <laughs> uh, so back. if you like Until Dawn for like the, the decision making stuff, I would definitely recommend Walking Dead season one and two. I haven't played mm-hmm. three. Um, it's not kind of that same atmosphere, but Telltale, Tales from the Borderlands is also hysterical, which also is free on Xbox Gold this month right now as well. Cool, it has cool. been free on PlayStation Plus as well. Um, I had one other answer for this one. What the fuck was I think the it? Quantic Dream games, like Heavy Rain. Oh, yeah. Heavy Rain would... and Beyond Two Souls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Actually, Beyond Two Souls was something that my roommate and I played uh together and it was kind of that similar you walk you interact you hit buttons and you do um prompts to get you through the story kind of thing yeah so we played that and that's the first kind of game that she played with me and then she saw until dawn on the screen she's like oh that kind of looks like beyond two souls i'm interested in playing that and then she played that one too so yeah i think that's a good choice and then of course you already mentioned it in this podcast hidden agenda yeah hidden agenda it's good and accessible i think until it's Dawn, deep. yeah. Until Dawn had a lot more, so I didn't quite talk about Hidden Agenda as much. But it, the story's kind of boring to me. It has the girl who played Black Canary on Arrow, oh, um, yeah. and she's like the main character, and she's just kind of blah and boring. And it, it, I don't know. We played for two and a half hours, and I'm like not compelled to play the rest of it right now, just because I was like, okay, it was yeah. a cool experience. I was making decisions together, but I wish it were something more exciting. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Is that the only interrogative we've got? It's the only one, yeah. One thing I did realize, though, when I was thinking about this question was how unique of a game Until Dawn is. There's yeah. There's really not anything that's exactly like it. Like, you could say, like, Call of Duty, there's Battlefield. There's all these games that are, like, first All of those shooters. are exactly like Until Dawn. You're right. No, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, Until Dawn, there's nothing that's like, oh, you like Until Dawn, so you must, of course, like this game as well. Yeah. Like, I liked Until Dawn. I didn't like the Walking, Telltale, Walking Dead Telltale, Telltale games. I haven't played heavy rain but they are different like i know enough about them to know they're different than yeah than until dawn they're not that same like episode of a tv show yeah kind of thing cool shit cool shit thanks listener reader person yeah 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 okay is that it for this week that's it for this week all right everybody go home play bioshock for the month of december we'll come we're back to talk the about the month. yeah next week we're gonna talk about game awards which happens this week December 7th. December 7th. Okay, so we'll have probably one more episode before then. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll see some predictions, predictions too, like what shit. games are going to show off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because and probably after that, we'll talk about their game of the year, our game of the year. We've got mm-hmm. lots of stuff about games and years coming up at the end of the month of December for you. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. This so is my continue. favorite time of the year for games. I, yeah. love, I love these discussions that happen. I mean, aside it's from fun. June, but... <laughs> Oh, wait, um, E3. I'm thinking, like, no yeah. good games come out in June, which is true. <laughs> but, yeah, there's E3 as well. Continue to write in with tweet at SplitScreenGP and email SplitScreenGamingPodcast at gmail.com about Xbox Checkbox. I've got a few games already in the list there, but I would love to hear what you think I should play. Yeah, yeah. All right, everybody. Until next week, have a super sexy rest of your November. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>